Hey, this is Johnny Cox. Welcome to my guide to playing intervals on the bass. Now, intervals are a really fundamental part of music theory and we should all study them and learn them. So I'm going to give you a very quick guide as to what intervals are and how we play them on the bass. So the smallest interval that we have on the bass is the interval called a semitone or a half tone. Now that's basically the distance between any note and a note that is one fret away from that note. So let me give you an example. I'm going to use the tenth fret on the second string, which is the note C. Okay? Now, in order to find an interval of a semitone, we can either go up a semitone, which would be going from the tenth fret on the second string to the eleventh fret on the second string, or we can go a semitone down, which is from the tenth fret on the second string to the ninth fret on the second string, which is the note B. So that's an interval of a semitone. It's the smallest interval we have on our fingerboard. So if we're going to play that interval as a double stop, then obviously we can't play two notes together on the same string. So we'd have to find um, one of the notes on a different string. So if I play my C on the 10th fret of the second string, then I can play my C sharp, which is the note which is a semitone above. I can play that on the 6th fret of the first string. Now you'll notice that it's not a very pretty sounding interval, so we're not going to use that one very much. We're not going to play that interval as a double stop very often, but it's still really important to know about it and to understand what it is. Okay, so the next interval after a semitone is a tone, which is just two semitones, so it's the distance of two frets. You can either go down a tone from the 10th fret to the 8th fret, or up a tone from the 10th fret to the 12th fret. Now that's the distance of a tone. Um, so if we're going to play that as a double stop, then obviously we have to find one of those notes on a different string. So we can play our C again on the 10th fret of the um, tenth fret of the D string, and we can play a D here on the 7th fret of the G string. As you can see, that's not a particularly pleasant sounding interval either when you play it as a double stop. So we won't be doing that that often, but it's still really important to understand what a tone is. Okay, so the next interval we can get is a distance of three semitones, and we call that a minor third. So this is a slightly more pleasant sounding interval than, than either the, the, the tone or the semitone that we looked at. So this one we're going to use quite a lot, a minor third. Now the next interval that we have is a major third. Now a major third is an interval of four semitones, or two tones. Okay, and it sounds like this. Okay, so there's two different types of third we've got there. Minor third, major third. Okay, so for example, in my video on playing chords on the bass, in the first part, I, I harmonize major scales using intervals of a third. And this is what I'm using. I'm using minor thirds and major thirds. Okay, and I'm using them to play major scales. Okay, so the next interval that comes after the major third is the perfect fourth, and that's uh, an interval of five semitones. Um, so five frets basically and to play that as a double stop on the bass starting with the note C it's going to sound like this okay so that's the interval of a fourth a natural fourth or a perfect fourth um, it's all just different names for the same interval so the next one after a, a perfect fourth which is a distance of six semitones or three tones is this one here That's quite, an, uh, quite a kind of uncomfortable sounding interval again, but it is a useful interval. We will use that one a bit. Uh, and there's, again, there's various different names for this. You can either call it a sharpened fourth because it's one semitone above a fourth, or you can call it a flattened fifth because it's one semitone below a fifth. Uh, or it's also sometimes called a tritone, uh, a tritone being three tones because it's an interval of three tones. So they're all different names for the same interval, but that's the interval there. Okay, now the next one is a fifth. It's an interval of a fifth or a perfect fifth. 
So um, that's a distance of seven semitones. Okay, so these intervals are getting bigger and bigger. They're getting wider and wider as we go along. Every time we add an extra semitone to our interval. Okay, so that's a perfect fifth. Right, now the next one, after the fifth, comes the sixth. Okay, so this is a minor sixth here. Okay, so we've got four whole tones now, so eight semitones is this interval. That's a minor sixth, and then we carry on one further, nine semitones. That's a major sixth. Okay, so the two different types of sixths again. Just like we had major and minor thirds, we have minor and major sixths as well. So after sixths comes sevenths. So in order to play the seventh, because the, the, the uh, interval's getting really wide now, I'm going to move where I'm playing my, my root note, my C. I'm going to move that C from the tenth fret on the D string onto the fifteenth fret of the A string. Okay, so the same note. I'm just changing where I'm putting it because it makes it easier for me to play the interval. So this next interval is going to be a minor seventh. And a semitone up from a minor seventh is a major seventh and a semitone up from a major seventh is the octave. And an octave, hopefully we all know what octaves are. Bass players, we love using octaves to play bass lines, don't we? You know what I mean. Um, so anyway, we can carry on past the octave if you want. So after the octave, you can go up one more semitone from the octave and we have what's called a flat nine. Um, so oct means eight, so after eight comes nine. So a flat nine is basically the same interval as a semitone, only the semitone has been moved up an octave. So for example, here I'm holding down a C with my first finger and I'm holding down a D flat with my little finger, which is basically a semitone interval, but it's a semitone interval where that semitone has been moved up a whole octave and we call that a flat nine. Now. If I take that even one semitone further, we have a natural nine. Okay, so that's a natural ninth interval, which is again, it's the same as a tone, only that inter the, the second note has been moved up an octave, so we call it a ninth. Okay, so you can keep going, but after you've passed the octave, they keep repeating themselves. So for example, you might hear someone referring to an eleventh or a sharp eleventh, but an eleventh is the same as a fourth, basically. It's just the fourth has been moved up an octave. Uh, same with a thirteenth is the same as a sixth, so you might see chords written down as, as maybe G13, but don't be put off by that. A thirteenth is just the same as a sixth, it's just that that sixth has been pushed up an octave, but it's the same note. Okay, so that's intervals. So hopefully that's cleared things up a bit. Feel free to ask me questions or post comments uh, if there's anything that I can help you with or make you more clear. Uh, and check out my other videos about playing chords, because this stuff is really relevant to that.